to another episode of Moving the Farm right here on RevolutionRadioFreedomSlips.com where information never sleeps and also live on KenPepperman.org broadcasting No Borders Radio. We are listener supportive if you'd like to support us in any way. Please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages, as well as tammypepperman.org. You can find our support buttons under the No Borders broadcaster. This week. Now, recently we've run into where everybody's wailing. Everybody's wailing. Carrie's wailing. Argentina's wailing. Agents are wailing. Attorneys. Attorneys sound like they're being tortured. And, um, and it's, it's been something else to witness. They're not just wailing, they, they, uh, they appear to be, at this time, squirming. The, um, I mean, this, uh, all, all of these things are, um, just absolutely profound to witness, of course. Yes. Uh, attorney's attempt to escape accountability. From the dailymail.co.uk Lawyer who removed her own fingerprints finally named after a four state crime spree on an attempt at a new identity. A mystery woman who apparently tried to hide her identity by removing her fingerprints on Friday was identified as a disbarred lawyer from Virginia, said investigators in a case spanning at least four states. The woman, jailed in Ohio since July 9th, was arrested after trying to use a fake birth certificate to obtain a state identification card under the name Julia Wadsworth. While booking her in jail, authorities discovered that her fingerprints were gone. There was no ridge detail whatsoever. Just smooth like a baby's butt. They never, they're never, they never going to come back, said Allen County Sheriff Samuel Krish in northwestern Ohio. This is just like uh, crazy. Oops, sorry. Reading on her computer, investigators found she had research information on how to remove fingerprints and how to determine if someone was being investigated by a federal agency. Um, he said she was identified after Cruz's office contacted police in Southwest Florida, where the woman mentioned she had spent time caring for an elderly man. An article and photos in the Fort Myers News Press led to an anonymous tip late Thursday identifying her as a former lawyer who faced charges in Virginia, Kraft said. He said the woman's name is Anne Marie Miller, 40, who practiced law in Roanoke until her license was revoked in 2009 by Virginia Bar. It's very, very interesting that she's attempting now further, further to escape accountability. Uh, these these attorneys will stop at nothing. Back in 1933, these attorneys thought it was funny to declare bankruptcy and then immediately, by oath, jump over into the banking system that they set up and maintain that they were not hypothecated. That that means okay, okay, the rules of the games just changed. And I'm not going to hypothecate me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hypothecate somebody else to take care of this debt that I'm responsible for. Because, well, I can. 
I'm an attorney. How's that working out for you? You can you can shave off your fingerprints, you can peel your skin off and trade it with somebody else, but that does not, does not, does not, absolutely cannot in any way erase all of the evidence of your works and actions. You already did those things. An attorney, it, it doesn't matter if you call yourself an attorney or an, uh, a lawyer, or you try to now call yourself a citizen, or whatever else you're attempting to do, it, it's not going to work. You're not going to escape accountability. You've been human trafficking for a very long time, contrary to the public law, contrary to any law. We were discussing these things earlier, and I've been trying to tell you, under the 12 tables, the public law, table 9, 1 and 2, laws of personal exception shall not be proposed, shall not be proposed. That means, right there, that acts of commerce and private acts are unlawful on their face. Laws concerning capital punishment of a citizen shall not be passed. Declaring someone civilly dead is capitally punishing them because you're putting them into debt. Thirty eight USC subsection one zero eight is unlawful on its face unless you turn that around. Now this refers to a citizen. It does not refer to a person. Someone that was created out of the fourteenth amendment by attorneys. except by the greatest assembly. Oh. Who's the greatest assembly? Sovereignty is the greatest assembly. Anyone acting under private acts and acts of commerce are not sovereign. They are a foreign state. They're a company, a corporation. They're not acting in the best interests or the, the well-being of humanity. Citizens. Those who you are pretending to take care of, calling yourselves their representation. Number three, a judex or an arbiter legally appointed who has been convicted of receiving money for declaring a decision shall be punished capitally. If you get paid to be a judge, you're going to be held accountable for that thing. You've been taking money for human trafficking, charging money every time a child got raped, every time a female got raped, every time somebody got beat. You've been taking money for those things. You shall be punished capitally. Shall be, not may be, or will be someday. Shall be. It's written in stone. And for the investigators of murder who have charge. That's us. We don't take money to hold you accountable. Number six. For anyone whomsoever to be put to death without a trial and unconvicted is forbidden. 
you have been declaring citizens civilly dead by hypothecation and negotiation within your legal process. The evidence is in your works. These are not things that I'm pulling out of a rectum or out of a cloud somewhere. These are your works and actions. You will be held accountable for that. And it says you shall be, shall be punished capitally for these things and put into civil death. That is the only allowance, is if you harm a human being. Dare you. From RT.com, U.S. refuses to recognize U.N. court jurisdiction on Argentina's debt. What jurisdiction? That is not a U.N. court. World courts, the international courts, those were all there before the UN took its place in 1945, called itself something else other than the League of Nations, which is the same confederacy as always. Here we've got an action of Heigl. Do you buy this concept? Are you going to buy this concept and think or believe that the U.S. and the U.N. has any authority whatsoever to decide anything, having evidence itself to be perpetrating genocide and human trafficking. The U.S., the U.N., League of Nations, Confederacy, Federal anything, Feodal anything, it's all gone. There is absolutely no authority. And these presentations are all fluff. St. Joseph County Jail Officer Arrested, Charged with Child Battery, WNDU.com, South Bend, Indiana. St. Joseph County Jail Corrections officers behind bars for battery against a person under 14 years old, police said in a press release late Friday. Jerry Mack, 28, was arrested Thursday and posted $1,000 bond Friday night. Mack was relieved off duty without pay, relieved off duty without pay pending further information. The arrest was not connected to his employment at the jail, police say. Mack is scheduled to appear in court on Monday. Really, got a new life there. Nice to see. Very nice to see. Sorry about that, folks. I'm trying to refresh some pages here. <clears throat> you know, this is, uh, It's just foul. Watching the um, merchants wailing and agents at play, creating nothing but controversy, irritation, perpetrating advertisement. It's unlawful. Advert with vert. Somebody's throwing something in your path. Somebody shut up your kingdom. Created controversy. Adversarial to you, moving you out of your state of being. And your adversary just can't stop creating controversy. They do this naturally. It's, it comes with being a psychopath. You don't have to groom it. You don't have to educate it. You don't have to develop it. It already is in that state. It, it, it thrives, thrives off of controversy, aggression, dissent, disparity, racism, feminism, Catholicism, Judaism, Islamism, environmentalism. It thrives off of those political tools. It, it, it requires that for its survival lives and breathes this stuff. 
definition of Satan is one who plots against you, your adversary. So all these attorneys do. They do nothing but wheedle about and plot, connive, make up ways to pit you against each other. Talk, 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 and the whole entire time they're pretending to be your friend. But by their own works and actions, they're only Satan, bottom line. There's nothing else that they are known as. Absolutely nothing else they are known as. They say really pretty things. Yeah, I'm going to do this, and we're going to do this, and we're going to protect this, and we're going to do this. And what happens? They do nothing but raise it to the ground, whatever it is. To the actions of Satan. Agamemnon represented. Marduk represented. Barabbas represented. They live in the house of Beelzebub, the lord of the flies. What are flies? Anything that's attracted to the honey. Don't be a fly. Don't be a fly. These damn attorneys. Nothing but Satan. Daily Beast is reporting um, the Toronto Ebola case. Uh, Ebola like symptoms treated in Toronto. A patient who had recently visited in Ni Nigeria, where a state of emergency has been declared over the Ebola outbreak, was admitted to a Toronto area hospital on Friday while exhibiting fever and flu like symptoms. The patient has been isolated as a precautionary measure. Quote, I am aware that we are currently testing a patient who recently traveled from West Africa. Initial signs and symptoms of Ebola are similar to many more common diseases, and poet Ontario Health Minister Dr. Eric Hoskins said in a release Friday night, quote, one such disease relevant to Africa travel is malaria. There are currently no confirmed cases of Ebola in Ontario, and quote, West Africa's Ebola outbreak has been declared an international health emergency by the World Health Association organization and has killed nearly 1,000 people so far. Terrible. New York. A new book reveals China's sad, brutal history of harvesting organs. Oh wait, that's not referring to a citizen. China's long history of harvesting organs from living political foes. New York Post. Enver Tati was a surgeon in a hospital in Yinyang in the northwestern northwestern part of China when in June 1995 he was instructed by his superior to prepare for an adventure, surgery in the field. In the morning when the doctor and his team arrived at their destination he realized they were at quote the western mountain execution grounds which specialize in killing political dissidents end quote. Quote when you hear a gunshot drive around the hill he was told. He asked why they were there well, you don't know. You don't want to know. After the shot rang out, he drove where he was told and saw 10, maybe 20 bodies lying at the base of the hill. The police led him to one in particular, a man of about 30 dressed in navy blue overalls, and told him that this is the man Tony would be operating on. Quote, why are we operating? Tony protested. Come on, this man is dead. End quote. But Tony felt a faint pulse, stiffened, and corrected himself. He said, no, he's not dead. 
quote, operate them, remove the liver and the kidneys. Now, quick, be quick. A stunned toady did as he was told, trying to pretend this was normal procedure. He glanced questioningly at the chief surgeon. Quote, no anesthesia, said the chief surgeon. No life support. The anesthesiologist just stood there, arms folded. He's already unconscious, the man reasoned. The anesthesiologist was wrong. Quote, as Enver's scalpel went in, the man's chest heaved spasmatically and then curled back again. End quote. After Toadie removed the organs and stitched them up, quote, not internally, end quote, as there was, quote, no point to that anymore, end quote, he noticed that blood was still pulsing. He was sure the man was still alive. Reports of organ harvesting in China are nothing new, as the government has admitted that the or organs of death row prisoners have been used for transplants. A BBC investigations have found that British women apply the collagen of executed prisoners to their faces every night. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. But according to longtime China analyst and human rights investigator Evan Gutman, in his disturbing new book, quote, The Slaughter, colon, Mass Killings, comma, Organ Harvesting, and China's Secret Solution to Its Dissident Problem, end quote, from Prometheus Books. The realities of the practice are far more awful. Organs coming out of China, which sometimes wind up in American bodies, are taken out just from the worst Chinese criminals, as China claims, but also from prisoners of conscience, especially practitioners of the banned and derided practice Falun Gong, who never committed or were even accused of capital crimes. Making this far worse, though, are the revelations that authorities aren't waiting for death to claim their bounty. In an effort to increase the chances of successful transplant, human rights, the organs are often taken from prisoners while they're still alive. Well, if that saves another human, I mean, if they're psychopaths and they're not citizens, the politicians or attorneys, and if that would save the life of a human, then, then that, that's lawful under the public law. Gutman estimates that to date more than 64,000 Falun Gong practitioners have suffered this fate with more being added to the count every day. Given the way it's demonized by the Chinese government, Palong Gong's origins were shockingly simple. A man named Li Hong, Hongzi sat outside on the corner of a rundown apartment block in 1992 to teach very slow meditative exercises to anyone who was interested. This would seem innocuous, but there was another element. Quote, a hardcore Buddhist morality system of compassion, truthfulness, and forbearance. End quote, that accounts for the movement's rapid growth and stunning popularity and helps explain why the Communist Party came to perceive the movement as a threat. Falun Gong quickly attracted millions of followers and by 1995 rivaled the Communist Party in size. This combined with the desire by the party to turn China into a global economic power, something that could be difficult to achieve if your entire population is meditating. Turn Falun Gong into public, number, public enemy number one. By 1996, articles began appearing in state-run Chinese media calling Falun Gong pseudoscientific, feudal, and superstitious nonsense. Well, how is that pseudoscience? If, if somebody's harmed somebody, it's already done. It doesn't take a science or a concept. And feudal, it's not feudal. It's protecting the rest of humanity from harm whilst ensuring their well-being. You know, these, these same politicians, these lawmakers and attorneys, they've been feeding and telling people to eat garbage through the Codex Alimentarius, through the FDA. Uh, FDA. They've been causing the necessity for organ transplantation by killing the human being slowly and over long periods of time by which to uh, derive revenue through the medical industry. I really like this piece because it, it allows the reader at the New York Post to see this for what it is. It, there is no sympathy, there is no mercy, there is no, 
there's nothing toward someone who has already harmed a human being significantly, egregiously. Harming a human being is harming a human being. There, it's no, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing outside of that. It, it, it involves, you know, removing that, that thing from the presence of all humanity so that it cannot happen again. And not only that, if we can use them for organ transplantation and their organs are compatible with the human body, then go for it. We don't, you know, in, in, in our nature, we don't waste anything. And if we have the capability of using something for uh, something else, it, it's good. As long as it doesn't harm humanity, that, that doesn't harm a human. You know, the, the human organs are failing and, and needing and requiring transplantation and things of this nature because of those very lawmakers, politicians and attorneys, psychiatrists, that are telling humans what to eat, what to ingest that makes them ill and makes them more beneficial to politics. So if their organs fit in humanity and there's no um you know risk of uh you know catching psychopathy which there is none i mean we don't do uh full brain transplants and all that and that will never be lawful um unless there's a very very uh, absolute strict standard and, and line drawn on transplantation of uh, a brain missing the frontal lobe that is not compatible to human well-being. By 1996, I'll continue reading. By 1996, articles began appearing in state-run Chinese media calling Falun Gong uh, pseudoscientific, futile, superstitious nonsense. Of course, that's not truth. And practitioners found themselves under increasing surveillance. By 1999, Falun Gong had 70 million practitioners, one out of every 20 people in China, and they began being arrested for the practice. During one massive peaceful demonstration, Chinese police sealed, sealed thousands of protesters into a position that made it look like they had surrounded a government building, thereby justifying an intense crackdown. The police that day, Google Nights, acted with unusual brutality, spilling blood for the first time in Falun Gong history. Well, these, those police, if they're working on behalf of the psychopath, they need to be removed. If they're, if they're allowing harm and they're not allowing the well-being of humanity, they're not law enforcement. They're not enforcing my law. They're not enforcing the public law. Chinese officials were so concerned about the movement's potential power that Jiang Zemin, the Communist Party chairman, was seen in the limo circling protester, the protesters several times so he could observe the enemy firsthand. Who hunts with a car? That's ridiculous. That's absolutely silly. Come on. Thus began what practitioners would come to call the persecution. On June 7, 1999, Jane gave an internal speech calling for the urgent disintegration of Falun Gong. Three days later, the Chinese government unofficially tr created the 610 office, their version of a, quote, special intelligence unit created under wartime powers. Its sole function was the organization's eradication. So a corporate body got together and said, well, we're not going to allow public law. It's kind of a lot evident here that uh, that corporate body is evidencing itself to be under acts of commerce and private acts, wherein there is no sovereignty. The following month, on July 20th, every identifiable 
Falun Gong coordinator in China was placed under arrest. The government claimed that to have arrested just 150 people. From interviews, let me determine that 10,000 practitioners were detained in the city of Harbin alone. That's funny. Practitioners were given two choices, sign a document renouncing Falun Gong or be left at the mercy of the authorities. Those who signed were allowed to return home. Those who didn't were sent to prison. Once incarcerated, practitioners found themselves at the bottom of a frightening packing order as the actual hardened criminals had been given the go-ahead to keep them in line with beatings, torture, rape, and even murder. So what just happened? What just happened? They took Jesus and they left Barabbas out to go go along and, and just destroy and raise and harm. Acting under acts of commerce and private acts. That's not according to the public law. That's not according to do no harm. That's not according to God's word. It's not according to anything. It's just whatever a corporation finds most beneficial for the corporation. That is not good for humanity. That's good for politics. Great for business. Quote, criminal prisons would taunt the practitioners. If you don't do what we say, we'll torture you to death and sell your organs. So here they are, just messing with Job. I mean, I'm going to mess with you and see how how beneficial we can just make you, Job. As Satan gathered around him. In, inside of that house of Beelzebub, worshipping that, that uh, demigod, a pseudo-god, Marduk, terrorizing Job, terrorizing Jesus, terrorizing, they're, they're terrorists, these corporations are nothing but terrorists. As the PR of war against Falun Gong intensified, 81 Falun Gong books were published. Leaders of the official state uh, religious religions denounced it, and even children were being inoculated against it. Painting banners in school denouncing the group, millions of peaceful practitioners face horrors, including torture via electric baton and a version of the medieval rack. Children were being inoculated against it, against the practice of compassionate justice, against God's word, against Jesus' word. Children were being taught to be politically correct and to protect emotions over the well-being of the body. Quote, a middle-aged peasant woman named Zhao Jinu had been arrested while working in a field, Gutman writes. After nine days of beatings, electric shocks, and sleep deprivation, she was pronounced dead on October 7th, the first confirmed case of a death by torture. She was tortured to death by this corporation. And these attorneys getting off on her death. And torture. By mid 2000, Gutman estimates that at least one million Falun Gong were imprisoned in China, many of whom would never see daylight again. By 2005, Falun Gong investigators reported that 3,000 practitioners had died from their torture. Gutman says that knowing that the group was designing figures that would stand up to outside scrutiny, quote, the real figure is undoubtedly higher. So here they are, they're, they're in prison and nobody can hear them because these corporations have it shut up. This is the story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was, was trying to get those kites out there and he sent out 20 of them. 20 kites while incarcerated. 
And he says, this is what's going on here. Hello, anybody out there? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Twenty. Twenty kites he sent out. And he says, if, if you'll only listen... If you'll just hear me out for a second here, Revelation, if you can see and if you can hear, why, we can find a way out of this. But if I reach out to you from this prison camp and you don't hear me, you don't see me, Well, of course, I'm not revealed. But others have tried speaking for them only to have the world respond with a collective yawn. And that's what happened during the crucifixion, of course. It was put to the people. Chief priests and elders had everybody all riled up, and they were directing the governor. Judas had turned on Jesus. And the governor's wife came in, and she says, "You know what? I can. I don't think this is such a good idea. I really don't. I it's just. I've been having nightmares about this stuff." And the governor looked over at the priests. And he says, you're going to forgive me for this, right? Priests, not God. He wasn't asking God. He was looking over at these priests. He says, you're going to forgive me for this, right? I mean, it's not on my head. And the priests, of course, assured him, yeah, you won't be forsaken by me. As he worshipped that other daddy there. All of these things, just from the most profound journey in all things, especially when a the pilot there turned to the sheeple and he said, okay, John's crying out from prison here, Job's crying out from prison here. And Samson ha Samson's house has fallen upon his head, and Delilah ran off with an attorney or agent or whatever hell. Eve taught her kids to cannibalize each other. Will, if man, she was nasty. And the governor looked across at the people. And he says, it's up to you. It's up to you. As that story was written, of course, people cried out for the crucifixion of Jesus. And they didn't do anything to help John, and they didn't do anything to help Samson. They just left Samson there castrated after Delilah fed him to the to the judges, gave up all of his information to take down his house. And of course the tax man he got in there and convinced some others that, you know, we gotta pay taxes. You, you don't wanna You don't want to argue me. You don't want to believe your son. You don't want to believe your son. You don't want to trust your son. You don't want to trust your father. You don't want to trust any other than me. So I'll I'll take some money off of you and I'll be your representation.
And then what happened? Well, there's taxmen, there's lawmakers and attorneys. In the uh, Banking Act, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73, said, oh my God, they bought it. They really bought this story. We have them on the hook. Now get watch this. And they signed a piece of paper that says, Well, I pledge my allegiance to the Bar Association, expatriation, and then I repatriate under the Bar Association. Guess what? I'm not going to be hypothecated. Only you are a natural person. Only a natural person can be a surety for the debt. Of course, this was all enabled by their attorney in chief, Abraham Lincoln, came in with the Expatriation Act three days before the 14th Amendment, where he freed all the attorneys and then insured their lives by calling them persons and pretending that they were living entities. Now this stuff is absolutely just ridiculous on its face. Ridiculous. You know, they've been selling you all rights, benefits of your own property. This, this stuff is yours. It, it, it belongs to humanity. Everything, every aspect of, of life and be living belongs already to the human being. doesn't belong to any corporation. Stop going out and signing those mortgages and signing those dead pledges and, and get away from my children first and foremost. And again, you know, I, I know I keep reiterating these things. It's absolutely foul what, what has been created by that tree of knowledge. And then the promotion of it through, of course, the representation of Jezebel, which is the media, the broadcasting board of governors, broadly casting this artificial intelligence upon humanity. You really want me. There's a war over there, and you really, really, really want me, because you don't want that war in your backyard now, do you? Hello? That's terrorism. That's terrorism. It's criminal coercion. Psychological warfare. It's absolutely unlawful on its face. John Kerry. Hillary Clinton. Every one of these secretaries of state and the other members sitting on the broadcasting board of governors. Governor Pilot there directing what humanity is exposed to by broadcasting measures. Now this one, this one. It's not the one, like the one that was written of in Matthew 27. It just says that the governor went out and put it to the people. He didn't say he was a blaspheme of what he was presenting. Blasphemy. Such as when the, quote, Muslim men were burning their widows after death. That never occurred. Muslim men throwing acid on their widow after death. 
That never occurred either. He's dead. It's a tsunami. You, you want to get into that, Mr. Carey? Because ten years later, they're finding children that were picked up by the Red Cross as prisoners of war that are just now, ten years later, being reunited with their families. And throughout this time, they have been victims as prisoners of war of the United States Incorporated. And in the media, the United States Incorporated, John Kerry and his mouthpiece, his, his glorious Jezebel mouthpiece, is indicating that he's the good guy for reuniting the child that he kidnapped using the Red Cross. Now, as these attorneys are picked up in various locations, children are going to be flooding everywhere because we are freeing them from captivity of attorneys. I urge all of humanity to stand up and take them in. You will be rewarded your works. But a lot of these children's parents have been slaughtered by war and, quote, natural disasters that have been put on by John Kerry and his cronies. Two hundred fifty thousand children in the United States Incorporated each year have been taken by Child Protection Services. The amount of children that we need to help and hold in our arms now, I don't know the numbers. I would guess and estimate that at least, at the very least, there are five million children in the captivity of these attorneys. And we can watch throughout history the um, stolen generations in Australia. We watch the th same thing in Canada, and it seems like the uh, usual load that they take upon is about five million children at a time. Do not be overwhelmed. Humanity loves children. We're going to find places for them. And again, everything will be tallied up at the tables at the end of this and everybody will be rewarded according to their works. There is not going to be a benefit of taking any child. That is not on the table. Absolutely not on the table. There is no benefit in taking in a child other than the love of children. You will be screened to ensure that you're not a psychopath. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll continue reading from the post the article. It's, it's fascinating that um, this has been put out today. Uh, in 2006, two prominent Canadian human rights attorneys, David Kilgore and David Mattis, Release report into allegations of organ har harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners in China. Of course, those two attorneys ordered that. They don't want to be held accountable for the horrific things they have been doing. So, they pay a goon squad to go out and remove anybody in their path that can actually hold them accountable. These two attorneys, psychopaths, they don't want to be an, a body harvested when their accountability comes. But again, if they have harmed a human being, if they are a psychopath, 
and their organs can help a human being at their well-being that is not unlawful. End of story. We're not going to put on a dance or a jig or a dog and pony show. We're not going to come up with some scientific data that says, well, you know, the possibilities of, of him losing a finger in this in this experience are, are very high. We're, we're just going to say, nah, 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 no, it doesn't work like that. Absolutely doesn't work like that. It could disfigure the body after death. That's That's desecration of a body. No, it isn't. You're dead. Do you notice it? Does, is it? Is it offensive to you when you're dead? I mean, you're the only one that can, can determine that after you're dead. And so far, I haven't heard anything from you regarding that matter. Now, if you speak me, to me from the dead and tell me that you don't enjoy the, the body's desecration, then that's great. But until that point in time, under the public law, it's lawful to harvest your organs for being the perpetrators of everything of hell upon humankind throughout the history of politics. I'll continue reading. The report, which reached conclusions similar to Gutman's regarding how many Falun Gong have had their organs harvested. Oh, so they brought in all, oh, many have had their organs harvested, and we think that's just a, a high number. What? It, it, that doesn't even enter into the equation. If there's 10,000 murders, 10,000 murders can be harvested. If there's 30,000 murders, 30,000 murders can be harvested. If there's two million murders, two million murderers can be harvested. Whatever the number is that has harmed humanity, they can be harvested. There's no set number until we get rid of all of psychopathy. You have been raping children. You have been destroying their souls and their minds through psychological warfare. You are a murderer. There is no greater harm than what you have done upon innocent human beings and there is no punishment outside the realm of what you have coming to you if you have skin and somebody needs skin they get first dibs If you have eyeballs and a human being needs an eyeball, they have first dibs. If they need an arm, they have first dibs. If they need your leg, they have first dibs. A murderer. A murderer is a disposable object. It's garbage it must be removed and if it's a benefit in any way to the well-being of humanity nothing is barred Quote also that year, the Epoch Times and Falun Gong newspaper went public with similar allegations. Quote, it was alleged that in 2001, at a hospital in the city of Sujitun, writes Goodman, accounting department employees noticed that requests for food, toilet paper, and specialized hospital equipment rose dramatically without a corresponding increase in patients. By the following year, this represented dis discrepancy of perhaps a thousand people or more. Okay, so why are you asking for money if you're not spending money on 
whatever. If, if you need financial assistance to remove the harm from humanity, ask for it. Raise your hand here. You no longer have to uh, practice compassionate justice in the closet, in secret, hidden away. Once the psychopath is revealed to you, which is the apocalypse, to come forth from a hidden state. Once a psychopath is revealed to you, remove it from the ability to harm. It is a hunter, it's a predator of children, and females, human beings. And we're up at break, folks. We'll be right back. Stick around. And welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm, right here on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com. Information never sleeps. We are listeners supported radio station. Or if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also live on TammyPepperman.org, broadcasting through No Borders Radio. And of course, if you'd like to donate to TammyPepperman.org, No Borders Radio, or Tamworth Web Development. Please do so by clicking on our support us button uh, right under the No Borders Radio player. And that goes to tamworthwebdevelopment.co.uk. Uh, this last week, uh, you know, it's just it's so, so profound. Um, and I'll get off topic for a second here because it's it's been a, it's such a blessing to me um, to see the creations and designs of Ben over at Tamworth Web Development and um, one of his newest designs is the ability to lift uh, the advertisements uh, and other information as you scroll down the page uh, Ben has come up with a design that allows the other stuff to, to go away so it's not in your uh, line of vision and this it's something that I, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I don't like fluff. I don't like a bunch of garbage and, and things and heavy fonts and colors and lots of things that distract me from what I'm doing. And um, it's an amazing design, and and um, hopefully you'll be rolling that out, uh, you know, in the very very near future. Um, also. Uh, before Tamworth Web Design, you know, I've been egregiously <laughs> taken for a fool on many occasions. And one of the latest was that I was paying something like $70 a year for web hosting and, and all of this stuff for a place for uh, Tammy Pepperman. And then uh, it, Tamworth Web actually, it, it's nothing. It's like uh, seven dollars a, a, a month for everything and um, that I was paying for it separately and, and being told by the used car salesman selling me this lemon that um, I required all of these these uh, things and, you know with with my level of I hate technology um, I bought into the concept until then and actually saved SammyPepperman.org and, and I'm so very, very thankful for that. And, and I urge everybody, if you're in need of uh, web development services, to, to go visit TamworthWebDevelopment.co.uk and um, just a thank you, Life Saver. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we talked about U.S. refusing to recognize you in court jurisdiction, that's all a game. Uh, that is the 
congressional courts. It's never been anything different. Um, you can go view evidence of that when uh, the Barrack Corporation came in in 1928 to seek indemnification against Poland through Congress's courts before the UN existed as a concept in between the League of Nations, of course, and then the uh, UN Charter of 1945. And this happened in 1927. Uh, it, it began, I think, in 1923. The order occurred uh, coming out of the court in 1928. Now, of course, the results of that were absolutely devastating. Congress came in and slaughtered, I don't know how many Jews persecuted, how many Jews and Polish citizens, everybody. Uh, we've got evidence from uh, 1921 through 28 in, um, uh, in it's Michael's uh, report on, on the use of propaganda techniques and the introduction of uh, Western medicine and the revolution that occurred in Kazakhstan during the Bolshevik revolution, um, Bolshevik Russia. And uh, you should have been If you go read the 1924 Covenant of the League of Nations, you'll find that that is a uh, further agreement uh, which refers to the Annex, which was the beginning document with stemming out of the Articles of Confederation. And um, you know, once you put everything together, you realize it's just, just one big, long banking schematic. Uh, and banking has many, many different uses in the, in the law. Uh, first of all, they're pirates, and so they claimed banks. Uh, like along the shore and claim that property to be theirs. Then they established banks and told you they were courts of some kind, but that was where the market was being played. They turned the uh, bailiff into trade. He was trading. And, um, you know, they were found guilty of this. Uh, securities fraud back in, uh, I believe it was February, out of the United States court, and um, well, that's when we had to take the claim into their insurance, and their insurance, of course, we knew that they, they wouldn't cover anything. They don't cover acts of war or civil war risks, so, of course, you know, they're, they're insurers. I, I'm not going to hold their insurers accountable for what they've done. Um, but, uh, you know, foreclosure has to be on all of their assets, including their insurance. But uh, the uh, people or the workers, they're innocent, which is what was revealed. I mean, the minute I took it to their insurance, their insurance stopped covering them. And, and you know, there's, there's a default foreclosure at that point. And, uh, it's just been insane. You have to go through these lengths to get rid of just this sick, twisted, infestation. Attorneys are the plague. You know, we're talking two million of those things in the United States Incorporated alone. You know, that's like uh, two million ants would, you know, get your house to fall down, wouldn't it? bunch of termites. Chewing away at everything. That's that's uh and they function since inception. They don't uh do anything else. They don't add anything to humanity, that's for sure.
from the national report on that and NYPD officer kills baby following breastfeeding argument. National, national report in continuation of an ongoing police scandal rocking the New York Police Department. Three month old infant Layla Smith has been pronounced dead following an August 6th incident. This closely follows the July 17th death of New York City resident Eric Garner after the use of prohibitive chokehold by officers against him. Garner's death was ruled a homicide by the New York City Medical Examiner's Office. Suzanne Smith, Layla's mother, had been sitting on a bench in Queens waiting for the bus when Layla began to insistently cry. Knowing that her baby was hungry, Miss Smith began to breastfeed her daughter. Witnesses at the scene report that she had, was then approached by a New York Police Department officer, later identified as Michael Fitzsimmons, who requested that this, she stop feeding the baby in public as it was indecent, he says. Miss Smith refused to comply with the directive and told the officer Fitzsimmons that she wasn't going doing anything illegal. Officer Fitzsimmons again insisted that she stop and threatened to arrest her for indecent exposure. Miss Smith calmly responded to the officer that he could not arrest her because breastfeeding in public wasn't against the law. He got so mad at her, said Tyrone Webb, who witnessed an unfortunate altercation. That's not an altercation. He started yelling at her, saying that, that he was the police and that she didn't know S blank 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 T about what was against the law. He got all red in the face, pointing his finger at her nose. She just sat there and kept feeding the baby, calm as could be, being real polite and reasonable. Someone else tried to chime in and tell him he was wrong, and he told the lady to shut up and mind her business. As the argument transpired, the bus approached and Miss Smith stood up and moved Layla to her other arm, momentarily exposing her whole breast to the officer and other onlookers. Miss Smith then clipped her, her breastfeeding bra shut and went up to get on the bus with her baby. Santa Parker, another witness to the incident, described what followed next. He screamed at her to stop and told her that she was under arrest. When she ignored him and kept walking towards the bus, he grabbed her by the back collar of her shirt and violently yanked her backwards. Poor baby just toppled out of her hand. She hit the ground and the poor thing was just starting to bleed from her head. The officer saw what happened and actually continued to cut off, to cuff the mother while she began to scream. It was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. Onlookers grabbed the injured baby and attempted to staunch the flow of blood from her split head. And of course, the word injury is coming from an attorney. I'd like more evidence on this occurrence as um, it looks like attorneys are, are attempting to um, either vilify law enforcement or uh, an officer actually do this but most of the time law enforcement uh, is not this aggressive um, I don't know local community leader and Smith family friend Harold Jackson was called has called for the arrest of Officer Fitzsimmons on charges of murder calling his actions travesty of justice. He's been placed on paid leave pending a full investigation. The New York City Police Department has issued a statement of expression their concern regarding the quote unfortunate end quote events and states that all citizens must comply with orders to submit to arrest peacefully so that accidental injuries can be avoided. No! No, a baby was just murdered. So we're going to deal with this um, as I see fit. Uh, the local government or whatever is there is not fit to adjudicate matters involving human beings, apparently. So we'll just take that out of your head. <clears throat> and, um, looks like very much that, uh, I need to look into that further. From WFMJ.com, Youngstown attorney charged in corruption case denied bid to act as his co-counsel. Well, it's interesting because, of course, the attorneys are civilly dead. 
Cleveland, Ohio, the judge presiding over the corruption case against two Valley politicians and attorney Martin Yab Yavorkik is denied a bid by Yavorkik to serve as co-counsel in his own defense. Yavorkik, along with Youngstown Mayor John McNally and Mahoning County Auditor Michael Scorantino faced trial in 83 charges alleging that they tried to cover up an alleged conspiracy to help a local businessman stop Mahoning County from moving some county offices out of a building owned by that business. Well, why would an attorney do that? Because they have benefit of that building being there. On Tuesday, Cuyahoga County Common Police Court Judge Janet Burnside filed a journal entry that reads in response to defendant's pro se notice of appearance, motion is denied. In the state of Ohio, hybrid representation is not permitted. Pro se is a legal term denoting someone serving as one's own lawyer. Representation, right? So he's already admitted that he's an infant. I want to come in and represent myself. Wait a second, are you standing there? Can't you do this outside of court? Or are you civilly dead? Make up your mind. Don't be split. And in the case of an attorney, worshipping a fictional government, and taking a, an oath to a fictional government, a fictional concept such as banking, taking oaths to protect national security over state or human well-being, living in a cartoon, and you're upset that you're being viewed as an infant. There's further evidence of your infancy. Well, the entry is, re is a response to a notice filed last week on behalf of Yvorkic, notifying the court of plans to have co-counsel take part in Yvorkic's defense. It was not publicly known until today's Tuesday's journal entry that the intended co-counsel was Yvorkic himself. He's a schizophrenic. The Ohio Supreme Court has held that a defendant has a right to either appear pro se, acting as, as his or her own lawyer, which is schizophrenic, or to have counsel represent them. However, he or she has no corresponding right to act as co-counsel on their behalf. Vorkic is currently represented by attorney Jennifer Scott of Lakewood, Ohio, and William Summers of Cleveland. The next hearing in the case is scheduled for next week. Stop whining. Get in that box. Stop wasting my time. Stop attempting to petition for crazy things like representing yourself or being your co-counsel yourself. Stop acting as an infant and you'll stop being treated like an infant. Gawker.com. Brooklyn lawyer arrested for not actually being a lawyer. A man accused of identity theft was in federal court today after he was exposed as having impersonated Stephen G. Dickerman, a lawyer with an office in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, that has been involved in at least 12 federal cases since 2012. At his arraignment today, the man's lawyer insisted on the charade, telling the judge, quote, I can clarify that the name of my client is Stephen G. Dickerman, end quote. Quote, the government has really no idea who the defendant is at this point, Prosecutor Lan McGeehan said in court today. I like Chinese judges. Not even the man's fiance is sure who he really is, owning to the man's unconfirmed identity. The judge denied him bail. Quote, I don't know who this gentleman is, end quote, Judge Roloni Reyes Jr. said. According to the New York Times, the man took advantage of the lapsed law license of the actual Stephen G. Dickerman, a lawyer with a 40-year career from the American Bar Association Journal. Quote, in 2009, an individual claiming to be Stephen G. Dickerson showed up at the registration office and received a copy of the delinquent notice form, which included the lawyer's social security number, 
date of birth, the law school he attended, and his attorney registration number. In a section of the form allowing for changes in personal information, the man claiming to be the lawyer wrote that his name was Shlomo G. Differman and listed a new business and home address, the affidavit says. He signed the form and paid a $350 registration fee. When Slomo Dickerman paid his registration fee for the next year, he included a letter explaining that he was using the first name Slomo because it was his Hebrew name. The name change was not made, even as Slomo filed subsequent requests because legal documentation is required. To assume Dickerman's identity, in the Times reports, the fake Dickerman, who also listed having received a law degree from New York University, the imposter would charge $400 an hour for his services. Quote, he did not appear necessarily to be a good lawyer. He didn't appear to be a non-lawyer either. Oops, he didn't appear to be a non-lawyer, unquote. David S. Stone of Stone and Magnanini told the Times. But the FBI was apparently suspicious early on and began investigating from the Times, quote, by the summer, federal authorities had become suspicious. At a seemingly routine hearing in July on a class action case that the suspect had filed two months earlier, agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation quietly observed the proceedings. One of the agents had already met the real Stephen G. Dickerman, the affidavit says. Two weeks later, two FBI agents posing as potential clients arrived at the, at the Brighton 11th Street address of the suspect. Taking notes on a legal pad, that man said he would represent the clients for $10,000 retainer and $400 an hour. He handed over his business card. It read Slomo G. Dickerman, J.D. L.L.M. Esquire. According to Sheep's Head Bites, authorities, according to Sheep's Head Bites, authorities raided the fake Dickerman's office earlier this week, and none of the other lawyers there have been charged. Prosecutors suspect, based on the driver's license found on the suspect when he was arrested by police, that the man might be G Stephen H. Dickerman, who appears to be a disbarred attorney with a criminal history. Gian said, Stephen H. Dickerman has been convicted twice of grand larceny and spent three years in prison. Prosecution is awaiting results from a fingerprint analysis. Thankfully, he didn't shave off his fingerprints like that other attorney did. We'll know pretty soon who he is. Who he says he is. Seems we've been just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Denver, Colorado. Had some interactions with Colorado this last couple years. And when we first started evidencing things, they were quite corrupt. I mean, uh, to the core. You now it looks like they're revamping everything. Um, sheriffs and all of those things are going out and Hopefully we will clean the house. DenverPost.com An Aurora attorney faces three charges and connections to a case this spring in which she claimed to be kidnapped. Becky Kale, 50, was issued a summons Friday by Westminster Police charging her with one felony attempt to influence a public servant and two misdemeanor charges of false reporting to authorities. I love the sound of that. Yes, law enforcement enforcing the public law are the authority. As Carmen says, recognize my authority. In May, Kiel was reported missing. This came after she claimed to have been kidnapped in March. However, the Adams County District Attorney now says she was never abducted. She's insane. According to court records, between March 24, 2014 and May 6, 2014, Keel unlawfully and feloniously attempted to influence Westminster police detectives by means of deceit with the intent thereby to alter or affect the public servant's decision, vote, 
opinion, or action concerning a matter which was to be considered or performed by the public servant. The false reporting charges, according to the records, came after Keel unlawfully made a report or knowingly caused the transmission of a report to law enforcement authorities pretending to furnish information related to an offense or other incident within their official concern when the defendant knew that she had no such information or knew the information was false. Neither the District Attorney's Office or Westminster Police would comment on the case Friday. Keel is scheduled to appear in Adams County City Court on September 11. Foul. They'll try anything to make money. False allegations, pretending they've been kidnapped, whatever it takes to make money, they're going to do it. Sick. Wasting my time and energy. Wasting humanity's time and energy. Let's get over this nonsense. Get over this nonsense. Of course, Israel is still bombing. They're saying they're bombing. I'm sick of this stuff. And as we go along and I find out who's financing this stuff, you're all being shot down. I mean, I know that the, the, the pinch, you feel a pinch now. But it'll get worse and worse as I find all of the investors into these corporations. So they're going to be held accountable for. Uh, not only aiding and abetting the known enemy of humankind, but war crimes, promoting civil war, promoting war. These things are unlawful on their face. You've been attacking citizens. That, that's, that's outside of any law. Any law. I mean, you can attempt to justify all you want to. There's no justification for the in slaughter of innocents. No justification. Uh, sorry about that, folks. American aircraft conduct four airstrikes on Iraqi militants to defend civilians, U.S. military says. They're not defending civilians. They're promoting business. That's what Kennedy put into play with you said. The development. In order to develop, first they have to raise it to the ground. So if Congress comes in and burns down your city and tells you you're doing it to yourself, or bombs your city and points a finger at your brothers and sisters and said they're doing it to you, not us, not us, it's not me, it's not me, look the other way. And then that same corporation comes in and says, let me help you. Let me build my stuff here. Oh, oh man, now that, that your house over there that's been sitting there for 200 years, that's not up to my code. All of those houses over there, those aren't up to my code. Get rid of them. No, wait a second. It just moved in and took your land. That corporation just talked you into taking your land from you. It just raised your city to the ground, burned it all to the ground, wiped it out, and killed all of your citizens so that it could park itself there and slap up a McDonald's. This stuff is not tolerated. It's bankrupt, depraved by the evidence corporation. And like a little bug, I'm going to pull its wings off until they're all gone. That thing has been so horrifying. It's been acting acting, acting, acting as if it's your protector, as it slaughters you and picks you off. 
it, it haunts you so well using its mechanisms of law, legal process. It'll remove you from the herd. Picks you off one by one. Brings you in as individuals into its court process. Removes the male. Places the children with the female. After getting her to turn on the male by offering her arts and minds. And then what? The children are on the edge of the herd. The, this system, this legal bull crap, moves the herd. It moves everybody away from the ability to protect the children. This thing, this thing that you've been calling your father, it is preying on you and it has very, very specific and ingenious hunting techniques. You know, I volunteer for everything, whatever it wants to do to me. To show you these things. You come in threes. At least groups of three. And these snakes in this viper pit, there's a change agent, and always two at least ratifying agents. So the change agent will be directing, and then the ratifiers will be ratifying that position for you. And that's why you feel all the time so badly, so horrifying, or horrified, terrorized. We got you under terrorism. So no matter what they've been doing, they're they're putting the blame on you. Oh, it must be you. We don't want you here. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. There'll be no more of that stuff. There's things that are causing this controversy, this adversarial stuff, pitting and polarizing human beings. It's not tolerated here. It's not tolerated in any way. And if you're terrorizing a human being in order to get them into the kill shoot, why, that's the action of delivering them up. Now, we were talking about organ harvesting earlier in China. From criminals. It is written for those that deliver up the lamb or deliver up Jesus. They receive the greater damnation. Boy, did that look offensive. It looked so offensive when I was reading through that Chinese article about the uh, practice of compassionate justice. It offended egos. And it offends emotional states. And of course, emotions don't exist. Those are things that have been indoctrinated into humanity so that they feel bad for the psychopath. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? I, I don't want to die. I don't want to be harvested or anything, you know. Uh, can't we just talk about forgiveness here? No. No, you already delivered up another human. You already killed a human being. You already raped a child. Let, let's skip over the talk about the forgiveness stuff because that's not an equation here. The equation involves harm upon a human being and accountability for harm upon a human being. What is the weight? If you spent the last 20 years of your career terrorizing human beings, you're going to spend at least the next 200 being held accountable, 10 times 10. 
Well, what does that mean? Well, it means an equal measure. An equal measure. I'm not going to do anything upon you that you haven't done upon yourself. Whatever you've spent doing, whatever you've, you've been doing, whatever you've done, that's what comes upon you. I'm not going to put anything on you that doesn't belong there. I, I don't want any benefit. I want accountability. And if you happen to produce during your time of whatever you've done, that goes into the treasury. And that goes back out of the treasury in the form of general welfare for humanity. I don't take any benefit from any of this. But I'm not going to continue to watch as children suffer your hands. You are horrifying. You're absolutely garbage, dirt, uh, disposable. You have spent your time being a leech, a bloodsucker. Something uh, uh, cannibalizing my children, eating them and using them in the most horrifying ways, the most horrendous things you have perpetrated upon children. And whatever you put out will come upon you. It's not a question of what if. There's no question of whether or not you did these things evidence is already there. And your buddies and your cronies, they, they have all of this evidence. I have all of this evidence. You know, if, if you've got uh, uh, tsunami-stricken children in your backyard and you're farming them in Africa, I'm going to go into your house and I'm going to remove you from that place. I'm going to take my children back. If you have children in your basements, if you have children anywhere near you, I'm going to take all of your stuff and those children will have the lives that you stole from them. There will no, be no more pain. None. I, you know, I, I think about when I was attempted on and all of these things, and, and that, that never really tortured me. It was, it was such a, an interesting uh, experience, and at first I, I experienced fear, of course, and I was in shock for a little while. But after the... the actual experience it, it was it, it, it just pales in comparison to what you have done upon the children the, 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 the pain and the um, <laughs> absolute depravity you've evidenced no I was Jeff Herbs, you, you had almost killed him when I arrived there. And that was your intent, to take his retirement. To take his house using his wife, or who he thought was his wife. You slaughtered his son and left his son hanging in his garage on Father's Day.
you think that I'm going to stand for those things and not, uh, you, you want me to forget? You want me to look the other way while you continue to do the most egregious things, abhorrent things upon humankind? You know, we talk about Thomas often. Jeff was attacked in the 80s through the use of electrocution and then the medical industry. Now remember, when, when uh, he was electrocuted hand to hand, of course at that time he ran right to the doctor and he ended up with shortened tendons. Now tendons can be repaired by folic acid and the use of the body to repair its tendons, repair itself. No. Medical industry cracked him right, right open, shortened those tendons, and made it painful for him to even be. Jeff is a, he's just a mountain of a man, and he, he had been with the um, electrical union for, for years. He was an electrician, and he was carrying huge bundles of electrical stuff. So his arms are as large as most people's thighs. He's just a, a humongous uh, mountain of a man. And when you broke him and shorten those tendons, it hurts him to move his arms, to stand, to sit, to sleep. And in this, you were cashing in on his pain. When in reality, he could have fixed this with folic acid. And you knew these things. And you continued to push and push and push. And ultimately, you left his son hanging in his garage on Father's Day to push him over the edge. And then, while he was on his knees, you prompted his, what he thought was his wife, to file and, and leave him. And ultimately, Jeff had to file for divorce. Because he was disabled and he needed his partner, who he thought was his partner, to continue to support him. And you left him. You played him from inception to extension and dropped him when it was no longer beneficial to you. Those things are not forgotten. Trina Manning and the death of her father Judson. That is not forgotten. Mega, that is not forgotten. Maddie, that is not forgotten. None of these things are forgotten or forgiven. All of these things shall come upon you according to your works. Whoever was involved in the direction or the activity that was taken will be held accountable for their works. The priest, Robert Hoekstra, Todd Johnson, D. Cameron, Cray, Isaacson, Wagner, Vash, all of these business associates, killing children, raping children. Thomas Herbs was diagnosed as a child victim of sexual abuse at the hands of his mother, a fourth grade teacher, special education teacher in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Sins are not forgiven. When I arrived there, 
Jeff and I saw his state and I felt his pain. That was the most horrifying experience. Mourning the loss of his son and suffering the physical leftovers from the medical industry. Witnessing all of these things. There is no greater pain and there is no greater accountability in the end. That's not something that will ever go away. You cannot give back the life that Jeff has lost. You cannot give back any time. You cannot give back time with children that have been lost. You cannot give back time with parents that have been lost. All of these things. And the only thing that can occur is absolute accountability. You have been going at this for far, far too long. I thank you for your great credit scores. You know, you have been, and I keep forgetting this shout out here, but attorneys have great credit scores, firms have great credit scores, and uh, this will be used to increase the borders of humanity. Um, capital transfers will be uh, going on, and, and um, you know, all of these things will be. Um, short-lived. I, I think that we've simplified. I ended up uh, launching Blink this week, which is a new um, automated system. And um, it'll make it a lot easier for our law enforcement. And um, of course, cuts out the attorney. And um, there's no longer a necessity for attorneys. The court process can be facilitated simply by uh, adhering to the public law. And um, violation, of course, it indicates only harm upon a human being, um, and wherein it, it only requires um, a computer to determine those things. And it takes out the emotional equation, which often prevents accountability. And, um, you know, sometimes you can see the most horrifying psychopath that has done the most vicious things dressed up with big doe eyes and, and you know, long hair and breasts to beat all and a nice tight butt and a skirt. And it looks so innocent, but it's done the most vicious things. And that emotional uh, pull is one of the things that got us to this point in time in the first place because you were looking at it and not considering its actions but you were considering how sweet it looked in a you know blue get up or pink suit or whatever or how smooth its tongue was and with blink that's not an option it just it's not an option the computer recognizes uh, only harm it only recognizes the public law and the evidence presented to it, uh, you know, it only recognizes the evidence, so it doesn't need uh, litigation, it doesn't need um, any of those things, and, and um, that's being, uh, it'll be implicated in, in all of, uh, put into practice in all law enforcement uh, shortly. We just now launched it to make my life easier, because here, here I am, you know, doing these things one at a time, one at a time. According to the uh, guide stones, there's 500 million on this planet. According to the CIA, there's 800, 8 billion uh, human beings on this planet. And, and uh, given the amount of time that I'm on this planet, I'm 37 now, and it would take me more than four years 
uh, or, or more, however long I'm expected to live, to do all of these things and hold everybody accountable. So uh, recently we developed a program that makes that easier uh, called Blink. And what it does is it you just upload the evidence and then command it to adjudicate based on the evidence and it's over. Fully automated. Uh, it doesn't need the help of an attorney. It doesn't need the help of a psychiatrist to determine intent or determine other things because it's already there. Did a crime occur against a human or not? Yes or no? Okay, okay. A crime occurred. Okay, now you get the equal measure. Boom, done. And we'll be back next week, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us. Be well, everybody.